FIG Ministry presents the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Join me, Alyssa Aegis, and my co-hosts, Father Rob Gallia and Justine Cumbo, as we break open the upcoming Sunday Gospels and discuss relevant topics and life issues from a Catholic perspective. For a shorter, more reflective explanation of the Gospels, be sure to check out our sister podcast, Catholic Influencers, Father Rob Gallia Homilies. Episode 7, welcome back to the Catholic Influencers Podcast and we are here with Justine, myself. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm really good. I'm really good. How are you going, Father Rob? I'm doing well. Happy, um, tired after a big day. But, you know, I love busy days because at the end of the day, I feel like satisfied, like I've done mm-hmm. something. I think it's a an issue I have that I'm a workaholic. I yeah. find my work in <laughs> I've, my work. I've really heard this about you, your workaholism. But excuse me, where did you hear about this? <laughs> oh, I got my sources. Um, but <laughs> no, I do. I do tend to work a lot, and it's. I think my dad is the same. That we, um, and I think it's. A, it is. I think a, a European, a Maltese thing as well. That uh, I've heard a lot of Maltese priests, which I don't agree with, but they used to. They say like work now because you'll have time to rest when you die (laughs) jeez louise (laughs) no pressure (laughs) well i yeah i just feel that there's an urgency and i probably need to let go of a few things i thought (laughs) lockdown would sort of calm things down and say i'm not gonna work but i became busier when lockdown wow wow we went straight into the deep end of father rob (laughs) confessing his soul to everybody still love me please love me anyway (laughs) i will say today i had the most quintessentially australian phenomenon happen to me. Whoa, that's a lot of I complicated know. words. So. I know, I practice them. <laughs> nah. I got swooped by a magpie. Oh, twice. Twice. Have so, you ever been swooped by a magpie? I have. I have been swooped. I've... Um but it goes on. my dog's been there's one magpie in Bendigo that keeps swooping at him. So what did you do? <laughs> well, it's not magpie season. It's, it's just I felt very violated and I don't know if you have been swooped by a magpie, you know. You know It's loud and sometimes they, the, yeah. they did it hit you, did it touch you? It swooped the side of my face. Um it didn't leave a mark. <laughs> but then I put my hood on because it was just so ungracious. Like you know that moment where you you realize you've been swooped? Because I was yeah. minding my own business. Business, I was sipping my coffee. For those of you who don't know, a magpie is a bird, but it tends it's an to- <laughs> evil bird. They have vendettas against innocent humans who are just drinking coffee. And they recognize faces and they literally They smell fear. They yeah, they go for the same They are people. sharks of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> but they're God's creation nonetheless. Yeah, look, I I look, this is this is not a reflection of me, but I did once have a dream. I had obviously been scarred that I like attacked a magpie in response. Like oh. that's how deeply it affected me. <laughs> I don't encourage that. Don't do it. They are lovely, not in mating season. No, no. This, they this they protect their young. Yeah. So. But it's not even the season for them right now, I think. <sighs> anyway. I'll take it up with the magpie boss, but um, we'll see if we can come to an agreement. Just leave well, me alone. a lot of crazy things come from the sky. Like where, where I live in Bendigo, you ha- we have like 35, I think it's 35,000 bats, fruit bats that fly over every Whoa, night. Do you know if they poo on your car, you got to wash it off. I know. and they, Or if they, anyway, there's a whole lot of things that that, that poo can do. So it's, this it's episode, poisonous. we're actually going to talk about flying uh, <laughs> mammals. No, <laughs> today, that's true. It's a lot of, but we're, Today we're talking about miracles, so maybe this fits in. Yes. Maybe this is they can come from the sky as well. Miracles, yes, yeah, that's right. Can, but um. Well, what do you think? Should we get into the scripture? I think we should definitely get a move on. Stay here talking about <laughs> different. Is... <laughs> Fifty-seven minutes later, and we're still talking about our deepest magpie moments. Um. So this week we are going to be reading from Mark, um, chapter seven. Um, verses 31 through to 37. So, let's begin. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephdaha, which means be open. 
At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This uh, over here is the, the a gospel which talks about so much about the beauty of of God's outreach towards us, you know, mm. His love towards us. And we'll we'll explore that. But it's interesting um, the journey. You see, at the beginning of this gospel, Jesus. Uh, they mention that where Jesus is coming from and where Jesus is going from. And again, sometimes we don't realize the context. We think, you know, this all of this happened in a day. But uh, this was like by the beginning of the gospel to the end of the gospel, you could have had like eight months in between. Whoa. This is like, because it, it says this, it, he went, was going from Tyre to Galilee. Um, and so, but he went via, side, via Sidon. It's like going from Melbourne to Perth. Going from Melbourne to Sydney via Perth, or in American text, I did the research. <laughs> it's like going from F Florida to Montana in order to go to Virginia. So that wow. it's just like going from one side to the other. And this journey would have taken eight eight months easily to walk with his disciples. So this in the context where they are is that Jesus and his disciples are at the end of this journey and they're very close. They've seen so many things, most of which are not documented in the scriptures. But they're now in this place where they're confident, the apostles are confident, probably used to the miracles they were seeing, mm -hmm. but sort of this must have caught their attention differently to maybe some of the others because they... Maybe they saw something in this miracle that was different to the rest. Yeah. It's so interesting. Um, I, I think this miracle does stand out because I was reflecting on what my perception of biblical miracles are. And I think I always imagine them to be quite a dreamy moment, like really beautiful and awe filled. But like Jesus really goes there in this one. Like this is one of the most, um, I suppose, graphic and physically involved miracles that Jesus performs. And Oh, look, I'm just going to name it, like the spitting. Like yeah. it's such a, a graphic image that we are in our time very unfamiliar with. Um, and, um, you know, Jesus um, spits on his hand and then touches the, the mute's tongue. Um, fun fact, um, that might not make sense to us and that might give us the kind of like, ooh, but um, in the ancient world, like saliva was considered to have healing properties. Yeah, medicinal purposes. Like yeah. Dabbing. And it, it does in a sense today as well. Like when when your child injures himself or herself, you, she said sort of, at least I used to do that. Mom, kiss my, kiss my <laughs> hand. And so yeah. that's been the involvement of spit or yeah. like, or if you cut your finger, you put your finger in your mouth. So we mm. also, in a sense, naturally go for, or the medicinal um, healing powers of, of, of saliva. And it was even more so in, in the time of Jesus. Yeah, when they... But imagine, <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine again, the, it's always, uh, sorry, probably really bad. But just there with with this this apostle, with this guy, and all of a sudden, sort of next minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is Jesus doing? <laughs> I said sort of that, that escalated quickly. Yeah. Putting it's his so finger, deep. spit in his mouth. It's like okay, yes. but he knew, he trusted. Yeah. But there was, there's a reason why this happens. We joke, but there is, yeah. there is a reason because, like, in this, I think there are a few things that were happening. Um, and uh, let's talk about three things that happened in this miracle that mm -hmm. were like uh, quite extraordinary. I think the first thing is that Jesus took this man aside. He didn't perform this miracle in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. Maybe being deaf and and mute was was an embarrassment he there was a, a lot of things that could have gone wrong you know in communicating also this a, a stigma as well around much like any physical ailment so it's in a sense it's almost like jesus was probably trying to protect him exactly mm -hmm. yeah. and so it wasn't about the miracle it wasn't about the performance it was about this man it was about his miracle you mm. know it was about drawing him closer to the person of jesus mm. and yeah, I think that's something so beautiful that sometimes even the way God works in us and with us, it's not necessarily in public. He works with us in those moments where we are still, where we least expect it. God draws us aside. Mm -hmm. The word for to be drawn aside, it comes uh, actually in, in the scripture quite a few times. You know, they remember there was a, a guy on the 
Um, the word to be drawn aside is the word kur, C-U-W-R, kur, mm -hmm. which means to be pulled aside, it's to pull over, like when you're driving and you pull over. So this is what Jesus was going, he was going in one direction, he grabs this person and he pulls over. Another time this happens was when the, this word is used, is when Jesus was pulled over, when he was walking and all of a sudden he hears a voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, and the disciples mm -hmm. tell this guy, shut up. Quiet, you know, mm -hmm. Jesus is busy. But what does Jesus do? He stops, he pulls aside Kur, and he goes and he says, what do you want me to do for you? Wow. And he heals him. Wow. You see, so that's, he, he sort of almost, the word Kur it, it means like sort of he disrupted the plans of Jesus. Mm. And now he's also disrupting the plans of this deaf man. One, because now he won't be able to beg. This, like in a sense, his security is going away. If but, he heals him. Yes, but also at the same time, um, God sort of got involved in his life, in, 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 in the mess of his life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think God's not going to do that for us. Yeah, yeah. I think that's because of the way we see our mess and we treat our imperfection like it's something that should be hidden, something that should be approached with a 10-foot pole. But Jesus does, nowhere in the scripture does Jesus have a 1.5 meter COVID safe distance between mm. people. Like his love, he wants to be up close and personal and he does not see our imperfection, our physical um, ailment. He doesn't see it with disgust. He wants to get closest yes. to those places. And I know, again, to really see the beauty of it and the intimacy of even the touch and using his own saliva. And I know that's, but if you see it as something that's beautiful, it's, mm -hmm. It's this profound imagery that Jesus is saying, nothing will keep me from you. Yeah. Not even the things that you think will keep others from you. They won't keep me from coming close to you, into your imperfection. It's, gosh, like when you just sit with that for 10 yes. minutes, you're like, that's how God loves us. And this, again, so, such a beautiful consideration of the feelings of this man mm. that he just, he thought about him. He wanted to save him from embarrassment. He wanted to draw him to him. This is a moment not about the others in the room, it's only about this man. And that's, that's one of the things. The second thing is the power of touch, as you were saying, you know, there isn't that COVID safe, that 1.5, that social distancing. This hand sanitizer. Yeah, hand sanitizer. <laughs> you know, it is, it's just like even, for example, I don't know, we live in a strange world. One of the things that we do um, is that we have a big charity here called um, St. Vincent de Paul, and you know, I, I used to go and uh, with the soup kitchens, but now, like, even even before COVID, you know, there are like you have to wear gloves, which is good, healthy, but you you have you can't talk to the people. Only a certain assigned qualified mm. people can talk to the people on the street. But Jesus wasn't like that. He was just there. He was. He just loved, and he he wasn't afraid to touch. But the touch has a significance because it was speaking a language. It was speaking this guy's language. Yes, yes. And I think that was um, another thing that really struck me is that Jesus speaks to us in a language that we will understand. Like, and for this man, he was deaf and mute. So if Jesus tried to speak to him audibly, he literally wouldn't have heard him. And so we then read and see that Jesus uses sign language. He uses gestures to to communicate deeply uh, and in a way that this man will, will understand. Yes. Um, and I think that's the same with us. Like, I think I used to think that I might encounter God through a lightning bolt, heavenly moment, or, you know, that that's, that would be my first encounter with God. But I feel like if that's how God approached me, I'd freak out. I'd yes. run the other way. Like, like Mary, I always thought of Mary, yeah. like if Angel Gabriel appeared in my room. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> see you I'd later. Freak out. Yeah. yeah, no, so that's good. Everyone, but good, Jesus meets the people where they can. And I think he spoke in his language, the sign language he spoke, uh, where, the, where three different signs. One is that he was, he gently pulled him aside, one. Mm. Two, he, he got his attention so they could see, so they could communicate, so they make sure that they got the communication right mm -hmm. and he touched his ears now he's touching his ears saying hey this your ears then what does he do and then he gets the spit and he says healing so he's just trying to show this is the healing power that the deaf man would have understood that wow, there does this healing, wow. this. so this i'm going to spit i'm going to heal but then what does he do the third thing is he looks up and he says god 
So I'm going with the power of God. I'm going to heal you. Oh my gosh! Isn't that incredible? <laughs> and and then the miracle happens. And mm. so this man was not merely a case. You know, he was just this this whole beautiful communication where where this man is physically healed, but out of overflow of the validation that he was getting from God, the love he was getting from God, the acceptance. And then the healing flowed out of that, but first came the love, the acceptance, the, mm -hmm. the, the, also the attention in the mess that he might have felt that he wasn't good enough, worthy enough of this miracle. Wow! But God chose to cure, to turn aside, and to reach out to this man. It's so fascinating. It's I feel very vulnerable each episode that I'm on because I feel like I just am getting smashed in my heart, which is like praise God for that. But I had a revelation and it's not a very like intelligent one, but I realize like I probably believe that miracles are possible for someone else. Um don't actually or haven't actually really believed that God could perform a miracle in my life. And I probably feel like this deaf and mute man of like, no one could possibly heal me or God might not notice that part of me that needs a miracle. But goodness me, like this is such a scripture to, to hit home. Like God is a miracle worker and not just for someone else, but for you. He sees you like he noticed that deaf man, even though God was just, you know, Jesus was passing through. He he pulled over yes. because he notices us and he does notice you and his miracles are possible for you and, and for You're, me. You, you are worth his time. You are worth him pulling over. You are worth the miracle that God wants to work mm. in your life. Yeah. But the greatest thing is not the miracle. You see, we don't talk about this man because of the mere miracle. This miracle was documented because... The apostles, Mark, wanted to emphasize that it is the validation, the love, the time that Jesus has for these people, for, for people, for us. And I think this is one thing that we need to understand. At the end of the day, the miracle was just a byproduct of that en encounter. Wow. A consequence, an overflow. Uh, yeah, but the greatest thing was this encounter that he had. Yes. That yeah. he was brought back um, to the love of God mm. and he was shown because again being sick at the time was saying that I've sinned in, in my life I've done something wrong and God yeah. the fact that God loved the sick was saying that God loved me in my mess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's hear from our ministry partners because of whom this uh, this podcast is possible the production of this podcast would not be possible without the support of our donors and ministry partners. If you've been blessed by this podcast, please consider supporting this ministry financially by making a one-off donation or becoming an FRG ministry partner from just $5 per month, as well as enabling FRG ministry to impact hearts across the world through the creation of online resources and outreach programs. As an FRG ministry partner, you will have access to our rewards program where you can receive exclusive benefits and content to help you continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus. For more information about becoming an FRG ministry partner, head to frgministry.com slash donate. Okay, so we're at our mystery box. It's time for right. the mystery box. in. <laughs> Who's turn? It's your turn. Oh, I yeah. feel like Father Rob. Father Rob's had um, the privilege of being the purchaser of these um, mystery box items for a little while. But for those who are tuning in, this mystery box segment, we essentially buy random products and make the other person guess what they are. What they are. So they shouldn't be obvious stuff. Okay, they let's see. They shouldn't be obvious. I feel like if so you this get... So is, this is a dollar store thing. It's a dollar store thing. Um, if you get it, I will cry <laughs> slash feel really stupid because oh, no. I have oh. seen this product so many oh, times. Oh my goodness. Do you no, know what it no, is? Not by looking at it. I don't know what it is. But I think... Oh, looks like something... So I'm just seeing a metal spaceship object. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a spaceship. Does it open? I'm not, you tell me. <laughs> this mystery box has turned into just a competition. You have to watch the video. Now we'll post <laughs> something on social media. Competition of who can stump Father Rob. <laughs> but I'd say this goes into a sink or something like that. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> now I'm going to let you hang for a little while. I know there's something in there. Tell me more. Um... Really? Uh, that's impressive. I have honestly no idea what this is. Oh, that just... Uh, an ashtray? No, really that's not an ashtray. 
<laughs> okay, I think it's something to do with a sink, some a drain, a drain of some sort. <laughs> okay, well, you are maybe 13% right. Um, <laughs> is it? it is a collapsible steamer. And if anyone steamer. knows how to open it, <laughs> please let us know because I have no clue how it works. How do you open it? It's, I think it's broken. I feel there's something. It behind. could definitely slice. I feel like it's going to slice my finger if yeah, I try too good. much. That's right. I was good. But um, it's, there you go. The, it's one from point a, for you. Thank you. I can sleep easy now <laughs> that I know I've stumped by the wrong. But, but this. And we'll give this away as well. <laughs> Might auction all these prizes oh, off gosh. at the end of the season. Goodness me. Goodness me. Okay. So, um, let's go to our next segment. Saint me a picture. Three, two, now, it's time very exciting saint because I happen to know that this man, this saint, happens to be one of your favourites. Yes, he is Saint Vincent Ferrer, my favorite saint. You know why? I think I he he just impressed me. I always want I love these saints who just believed in greatness in the greatness of God who didn't limit God. And when I was younger, <clears throat> like just a couple of years ago when I was 19. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I am did you shocked me? Oh, no, no, maybe I was not, maybe I was a bit older, twenty. Um, but <laughs> but there was this um, a friend of mine gave me this book called Raised from the Dead, and I read I was reading about these saints that were ro rose people from the dead, and the Saint Vincent Ferrer somehow just stuck with me. Like he and he then he became my patron. Every time I needed something, I would pray for the intercession of Saint Vincent Ferrer. How I wish. I had the mountain moving faith that he had. Mm, that's incredible. I think I didn't know anything about him. I apologize, but through reading through his life and you should all do it. That's what struck me. Like he didn't just perform through God's power. He didn't just perform like one miracle, which would be pretty amazing. There were hundreds of miracles mm. because of his faith in what God could do. Like he actually believed it was possible. That really, really struck me because yes. I find it hard to believe that God could do one miracle through me. You because know? for him, as it was with the apostles, miracles were normal. They were like, the only times you see the apostles really confused or upset is when miracles didn't happen. You wow. Like when they prayed over that man, uh, uh, that demon possessed man, and the demon didn't leave him. And they're saying, why did Jesus, why didn't he leave? Mm. Now, I would be asking Jesus, uh, like if a miracle happened, how did that happen? Yes. But instead they were upset because it didn't happen. And they said, this one needs be prayer and fasting. That's for another topic. <laughs> but but this, this is the thing that these guys, these saints, these early apostle saints lived in believing in miracles. And he sort of would, he converted thousands of Jews um, through the miracles and preaching. And this was what, this is what sometimes miracles are. Miracles are a sign to confirm the validation, the love, the acceptance, the gospel, the good news. Yes. And so, like, this is a sign, again, that God shows sometimes through that. And he used St. Vincent Ferrer to do that. Totally. And it's cool that miracles aren't just limited to physical healing. Like, the act of coming to know who God is, our conversion, that is Probably the single most yes. greatest, <laughs> most greatest, but I don't even know if that's most a Most great arrestist. Assessist. <laughs> <laughs> Miracle is knowing, like realizing who God is and, and giving our lives to him. So, um, yeah, I also learned that he's the patron of um, builders. And plumbers. And plumbers. <laughs> we were having a discussion before. We feel like plumbers are really forgotten. So yeah, I'm glad well, that they have a patron. So, so plumbers have a patron. And it's always, I think the reason why is because he built up the kingdom of God. But can I say a story about St. Vincent Vera, which is a story. Um, he he um, would perform great miracles and raise, he would raise a lot of people from the dead. But one story that I will never forget is this guy. There was a trial. He, it was about justice for him. So for him, for St. Vincent, I, he'd perform miracles all the time. And so mm. there was this um, guy who was in court or the equivalent of the court at the time, and he was being tried for murder. And he kept pleading his innocence, pleading that he was innocent. That um, And so St. Vincent Ferrer brought the corpse into the courtroom. And Very of the, dramatic. Of, of this <laughs> murdered person and raised him from the dead oh, in front of the gosh. courtroom and said, hey, Mr. Jones, whatever your name is, 
did this man murder you? <laughs> and wow. The, and the dead man who's alive now says, <laughs> says, says, no, it wasn't him. And then St. Vincent says, hey, I'm giving you this grace, like this in, in God's name. You can stay alive and or you can go back and die again. And he said, no, 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 I want to die again because I'm assured of heaven. I know I'm going to get to heaven. My goodness And, and so he, he died again. It's like the ultimate lie detector test, <laughs> <I know. laughs> like raising the, the dead to life. Wow. Wow. So bringing about, anyway, it was so normal. Imagine, we, we, I, I believe that God still can perform these miracles. I have seen such great miracles and mm. I have seen also and I know this is crazy. I have seen people, not in front of my eyes, but I know of people that have prayed um, for people to rise from the dead, and they have. And so I do believe God still does it. But sometimes we were afraid. Imagine, like, I mean, I'd be embarrassed to go to a morgue and pray for the corpse to rise. I just don't even think they'd let you in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hi, I'm here too. <laughs> one of the reasons that too, if they did rise from the dead, I'd freak out again. Yeah. So. Well, that's a really, really good segue, I think, to today's topic. Let's. Today's topic is. Topic of does the Jesus week. still perform miracles yes. today? And real, like, does he still perform real miracles? Does he still. What, what is a miracle, first mm, of all? It's a very good point. And I think, like I confessed before, I think I had the wrong idea of what a miracle is. Like, I reserved it for those big, grand gestures that God does for someone else over there, raising people from the dead. Um, but like anyone who's posed with a question they can't answer, I turned to Google. Um, <laughs> and according to Google, um, the definition of a miracle is an extraordinary and welcome event that is not ex explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore attributed to a divine agency. So really what that tells me is that any act of God is considered a miracle. You know, whether it's small or grand or big or medium sized by our human interpretation, anything that God does is a miracle because we can't do it. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's an exclusive act of God. Um, when finding, I, finding peace and suffering, how like even uh, where your whole life you were afraid of death, then you are given, so someone is given the news that they have cancer, they know they're dying, and all of a sudden they have a peace about it. These, yeah. these are great miracles. And maybe as well. our, our issue of, believing whether miracles still exist is that we don't attribute the right terminology to, to phenomenon, spiritual encounters that we have. We just think we don't notice it or we just think, oh, that just is what it is or God answered my prayer. Well, maybe he didn't just answer your prayer. Maybe he performed a miracle. Yes. We just don't attribute miracles to where it's due. And God does, you see, this is, uh, God still does perform miracles. He does perform these small and these extraordinary miracles. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that God performs sort of, he can still raise people from the dead. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen it. I, I Look, as a priest, I get to anoint the sick. And I, I believe that one of the biggest mistakes that people make, especially Italians, Maltese, they, you know, like when I go to anoint an Italian, Oh, they, they always leave it for the last minute or, or a Maltese, you know, they say, oh, don't let the priest see you. Don't let the, my husband see you because he thinks he's going to die if he sees you. Wow. So they attribute the anointing of the sick to the, the extreme unction, we used to call it, or the anointing of the dying or whatever. But we, it is the anointing of the sick. It is, an, it's a, it is a prayer for healing. Again, oil has healing properties and I have seen so many and I'm I'm not just saying this I have seen so many miracles and extraordinary miracles like people blind people seeing I have seen people who are cancer had cancer and then got a good diagnosis I've seen people with motor neuron diseases I've seen people with with tinnitus you know and I see this not only through the anointing of the sick but even on our Sunday masses and I just am in awe and our staff document and keep all of these testimonies that we get so I do believe that God heals and still heals today it's incredible and I think one thing I want to talk about and I'm certainly not an expert on it is that if scripture is true and I believe it is we can actually, God has given us as baptized, as people who have received the Holy Spirit, He has given us the capacity to heal people, not through our own strength, not for ourselves, but through His power and to give Him glory. And it's something I haven't really connected with 
enough in my life. Um, but I, I did remember the story, like if that's true and I believe that it is, I, I remember I was on a train in Italy with my friend Megan. I don't know if she listens to this podcast, but hello, Megan. Um, and sitting opposite from us on the train was a lady with, um, with a sore knee. And I remember Megan looked over to her and she's like, Justine, I'm going to gonna go and pray for her. And I remember, and I'm so embarrassed to admit, but I was so embarrassed. I was like, don't go pray for a stranger. Mm. But Megan believed that God could work through her mm. and that God could meet this lady who maybe didn't even speak English, could meet her on a train on the way to Assisi and heal her. Megan believed it and I found it so hard to admit. And so maybe one of the obstacles to miracles, us you know, receiving them and, 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 and witnessing them is our disbelief. Yes. We don't believe that God could do it. And um, the manifestation of disbelief is is not asking. And mm. many people, I believe, miss out on their miracles because we don't ask. Um, or because you don't ask, because you don't pray for someone, because I don't pray for someone. And be, now I've prayed with many people and they got healed, but I've prayed with a whole heap more than I have that haven't got healed. And I yeah. don't know why, but I'm not going to risk thinking that, hey, maybe they won't get healed so and hold back the prayer. I'm going to pray that if it is God's will, they will get healed. And if you're embarrassed, I tell you one of the tricks that I use is pray over animals as well. I have a, <laughs> I mean, I, my, I had a beagle once, so you know, it's a, like a little dog. Not a bagel, Not a, a beagle. beagle. <laughs> and it had its glands blocked and I was, I was home alone. And it was just going in circles, screaming, screaming, screaming. Like, and I didn't, I couldn't go to a vet. I couldn't drive. I didn't know what to do. And I like, I, I was just stuck. I couldn't contact my parents. Uh, it was before I had a phone, you know. And I, I remember I just went up. The name of the dog was Rosie. I grabbed Rosie while she was screaming. <laughs> no <laughs> offense to people who are called <laughs> Rosie. But I just said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And literally, this is what Rosie did. Uh, and just went to sleep. And nothing, like no sickness. Another was, the situation is like a goldfish, you know. There was a, a friend of mine who was... <laughs> A seminarian who, who's a priest who's now my parish priest in Malta and he, he uh, we were talking like in his room and he said that there was a goldfish upside down and he said oh, I'm just waiting for it to die and then I'll throw it away and I said can can we pray with this goldfish and he said okay so we both put our hands on the on the oh thing uh, and uh, on the aquarium and we prayed I said Lord Jesus please heal this goldfish anyway Ten minutes later, he's knocking on the door. Rob, Rob, the, the goldfish is swimming around. It's swimming well, around. I thought you meant the goldfish was knocking on the door. I was like, goodness me. Man, I wish I'd known that as a kid because I reckon we went through about 57 goldfish in a year. So just... Yeah, but I, I believe, I don't know why God, maybe to build my faith, maybe to build his faith. I don't know. But sometimes God does this and I think it, it's... it's uh, Jesus tells us in the scripture to lay our hands on the sick and to pray for them. Mm. And so we should be doing that. Totally. And I, I really want to clarify this point because I think you mentioned this earlier. We might pray for a miracle, believe for a miracle, and it might not happen in the way that we wanted it to, or it might not look like what we thought it would look like. Um, but I just want to clarify something really important, that miracles in our lives have nothing to do with us earning them no you know or proving that we are holy enough faithful enough have prayed enough to or god have enough faith it's nothing yeah. to do with our level of of how much faith or not getting a miracle it's not doesn't mean we don't have enough totally faith. and i think sometimes you can feel a bit deflated if a prayer isn't answered in the way that you thought or if it doesn't unfold with the miracle you thought but just this gentle but strong reminder it has nothing to do with god loving you more or less or you work have working hard enough or have proved yourself enough like god can see the biggest scheme of our whole life he has the bird's eye view he's got the current you know, he's standing with you in it right now we can't see our whole life in its full perspective but god can and and i think that if the miracle doesn't unfold in the way that you thought um let the miracle be that you know and that you are confident that God is showing up in your life. He is with you. That is a miracle. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make that clear because I think I've been there in the past. Yes. I'm like, oh, God, like, 
But, but you why? see, I think this is one of the things. I have a friend of mine, for example, who goes to a different church, and um, and he he left the Catholic Church because um, his mother was sick with cancer, and we um, many people went to pray. And even though he believed so much that God would heal his his mother, um, she wasn't healed. And she did die. And the thing is, but for me, I start to think, what's the greatest miracle? Is it that she was raised up? Because she's going to die again. Mm -hmm. We are all, if we're raised from the dead, we're going to die again. Mm -hmm. If we're healed, we can get cancer again. We can get sick again. But the amazing thing is, imagine in that we take that moment and allow God to work through taking away our fear to giving us peace in and amidst our suffering. Mm -hmm. I think that is the greatest miracle, that the world cannot offer us that. No one, we cannot offer us that. It yeah. is only God, the God of peace, that can give us that. Yeah. And that, by definition, is a miracle. But that, by definition, also is the greatest miracle that we can trust in the Lord in spite of our difficulties, in spite of our suffering. Yes. Amen to that. And hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for listening um, to this podcast. Uh, please stay in touch on our social media um, we are at Catholic Influences underscore um, podcast at frgministry.com, frgministry.com forward slash podcast. And please leave us a review, a five star review, so that we can get up in the algorithms and we can get um, a whole lot more um, views and, and listens. Love a good algorithm. And ladies and gentlemen, beware of the magpies. <laughs> Peace out. That's all I have to say. <laughs> God bless you. See you, See you again later. Next week.